Dallas Fuel Season 1 action. So, Season 1 of the Overwatch League, wow. That was, um... Season 1? Season 1 is... Coming into the league, everybody, including myself, thought we were going to go in and continue to have very similar success to what we had before, which was basically three years of complete domination. We were that team. You know, we made a lot of changes. We bolstered our roster. We added Custa, we added Siegel, XUC, you know. Uh, it was such a crazy team at the time. So many people looking at us like, oh my goodness, this team is amazing, you know. It was a star-studded lineup. We had the biggest streamers in our team. We had a lot of hype. When I think about it, it was like kind of a heavy mantle to be holding, you know? We are really popular. We just won and we have to keep winning. Otherwise we look idiotic, right? At the time, I never really felt pressure from it, but on hindsight, it was a big, massive responsibility. You know? So going into the start of the inaugural season of Watch League, and we played our biggest rivals, Soul Dynasty, AKA Lunatic High. Like we had never beaten Lunatic High in the real game, right? We were the only two teams with our like really big, like old fan bases. And so it was like, in my opinion, that felt like the finals because it felt like we need to win against these guys. You couldn't have asked for a better start to the league as a whole. Like, it, it was such a great matchup for the first game of the season. You saw Fleta popping off, you see Effect popping off, Time on the Roadhog, like, it was a banger of a match. Even though we lost that match, I still think that was one of the coolest, like, hype matches there is in Overwatch League history. Those are the sort of games you live for, even if you didn't win them. Like, those are electric sort of games, and, you know, couldn't ask for a better start. Minus winning, I guess, technically, yeah, I guess. To the league. Okay, I'll start back. Oh, we could have asked for a better thing. We could have won the thing. We had this star-studded roster that had all this success, and it almost felt like we couldn't fail. And then, we failed. Not only did we fail, we failed, I mean, miserably. We had this massive expectations going in. Oh, like, no, these guys need to win. They're gonna win 100%. And then we, then we lose. I don't know. It, it, it just feels like the downfall of the team. I feel like it's gonna be fun because we're gonna keep winning. We are one of the best team in the world. Yeah, we're gonna keep winning and we're gonna have the best moment in my life. And then we lose every match, <laughs> almost every match. It was like the biggest disappointment to me. I couldn't understand how it happened. And our team and players worked hard. Like it wasn't uh, like they were slacking off. Like we just couldn't put it together in those matches. You know, we just couldn't make it happen. We weren't lazy. We played the game a lot, but still like things weren't just enough. We self-destructed because of multitude of things. Like, like if things weren't going so bad outside of the game, like we could have come back. But since everything was going to the shitter, like everywhere, like everything like <laughs> was just falling apart, there was no coming back. It was over. Anytime you have a large amount of eyeballs on you in esports and you fail, um, it turns from being the highest of the highs to the lowest of the lows. And it is inevitable that some form of depression starts creeping in on you and you start questioning yourself and your career and you know all these things and so honestly we fell into like a, a really deep dark place thinking back like we had so many problems we could have gotten by them if we just knew what the, what the hell to do but since we're all like kind of like figuring out as we go right couldn't like get by it was the first time we had to feel real defeat consistent defeat. We just weren't used to that as an organization. We were never in that position ever in our history. It was tough, that was tough. And we had to really like lift ourselves out of it. We had to find a way to kind of like rise through the ashes there and we managed to do that. When I got first messaged by Tasmo and Hastro, knowing where the team had been, where you know the highs of the players that had, uh, now that they were at this low point, they were looking for a breath of fresh air. I was looking to move forward with my career and this seemed like a really good fit. So we only had, you know, a few days to practice as a team before the first match and we need to build something new for how we want to go about this. And we only had two days to do it before the Shanghai match. 
and everyone thought this was the match where Shanghai was going to get their first win. I did not want to be the first team to lose to the Shanghai Dragons. No one wanted to be the team that lost to Shanghai. This first week was kind of our way to identify what team we wanted to be. I think that first match was a big deal. It kind of set the tone for the stage. Dallas had only had six wins for the whole season. In this stage, you know, we ended up having six wins just in this stage alone. That was a huge accomplishment. And that's it. They will succeed. Dallas Fuel with the win, 3-1. They get to play spoiler to the Valiant's perfect stage. They technically keep their stage hopes alive. The fuel have grown so much. Things were looking up that we were actually clicking. And at the end there, we were one game away from whether we made stage playoffs or not. We're reliant on London winning one map in the series. We're sitting there watching this game. London is down 0-3. They've already lost the series. That's the last map. We just need them to win this one watch point Gibraltar map. That was a very special moment for me because that was my birthday and to be able to accomplish those things, you know, it was just just a cool collection of things to happen all at once and definitely one of the things that I'll remember for a long time. It was a hype last stage for us, right? You know, we finished with a winning record, we made the playoff, we almost beat New York. It pains me, but at the same time, like we almost could have made those stage finals if we had beaten New York there. But it is what it is, that season was tough, but you know, it was uh, kind of a light at the end of the tunnel there with a really cool and, and fun ending to that season. We actually got wins, we made a stage playoffs. Like those things were a big deal at the time. And to see the, just the confidence in our players going from, you know, the start of the stage to the end of the stage was victory enough for me. You know, from a competitive standpoint, yeah, sure, I, I get it. Like, you know, we didn't have the greatest of seasons, but looking back at it, I mean, there's some really fond memories of that whole season. I mean, you had, you know, from the start of the hype with the, the Soul Dynasty match to then silly escape rooms and actually she, <laughs> oh my God, you know, gorilling down the hallway at the Blizzard Arena, Mickey the Reporter, but then also going to like the main event up in Dallas, you know, with the team where we got to meet our fans here in Dallas. And it was like such an, immense amount of people that showed up. It was way more people than I thought there would be. Like, I was like, I was kind of flabbergasted, like how many people there would be, like just having fun with us. It was just amazing. Like, it was amazing. Looking back at it, I mean, look, it was a learning experience, but uh, I mean, it was an enjoyable season for a lot of other things, right? You know, happy to have been a part of it and, you know, look forward to the next one. So going into season two, obviously, you know, we came off of a really good end to the season. And, uh, you know, it was time for us to kind of, you know, change up our roster a little bit, you know, always trying to adapt to what's going on. And so there was a lot of discussion on what kind of changes we want to make. And we felt like that that this team still had greatness in them. Uh, and that if we can be able to add some pieces onto it, that we could have a really good season. We came into that season with the biggest fire under us and everyone was putting in extra work to make sure that we did not repeat season one results in season two. When that season began, we had it together. It was put together right, the team felt good, and we started winning. We were winning and we were producing. I think we finished four and three in stage one of season two which was solid and it was certainly a basis to be optimistic about what we could be doing. You know, four and three was, while it's not everything that we hoped for from the stage, we're really close to making the stage playoffs, but just barely missed out. But, you know, stage one was still a fairly successful stage, but we still felt like it wasn't a bad stage. So headed into stage two, we had the opportunity to host the first ever home game in esports history. This was like the culmination of what the Overwatch League was pitching as the differentiator for why this was gonna be so incredible for esports. That to me was an opportunity that was so special. We had to do all sorts of things to make sure that we were gonna put on a great event and have a great experience 
and make sure that that was a moment in esports history that would live on forever. 경기장이랑 셋업까지만 봤을 때는 그냥 얼떨떨했던 것 같아요. 그때 그 당시에 타즈마가 계속 이홈 게임 자체라는 게 e스포츠 역사에서 거의 처음이었다고 말했던 걸로 계속 기억해서 아 되게 내가 역사 속에 한 역사 한 역사의 한 속에 내 경기를 하게 되겠구나 하면서 그냥 되게 자랑스럽게 생각하게 됐고. To be able to see the arena and knowing that it was going to be packed. It was just kind of a surreal moment. You know, getting ready for that first home game was a big deal for us. To be able to, you know, have that in front of our fans, something that, you know, we wanted to make sure we were in our best shape for that, you know, because this match is going to be remembered regardless. We get to the day of the event, and it was a sellout crowd from all over the world. People flew in for this thing. People were lining up to come into the venue, like, hours before the venue opened. Energy was electric. Showing up with thousands of people strong, all like wearing our jerseys, you know, showing up with face pay and everything, you name it. That for me was incredible. It was definitely an exciting time seeing the crowd for the first time. I remember being backstage and peeking out the curtain and looking at the fans and, and you just see, it looks like an endless sea of faces because you can't even see the back, you know? I mean, the amount of people that showed up in the crowd was, I mean, it was thousands, right? I mean, sure, there's been big events and big arenas and all these things. And I've been to multiple events where there's thousands of people, but this is our home event that we had planned and we had made for us, for Dallas. And I was so proud of them all walking out, getting their names chanted out, each and every one of them. And those are the, the moments you live for, right? Those are the moments you, you train so hard for. Having a crowd that was there for you. You know, they're not just there to watch Overwatch. They're there to support you and your team was a, a very surreal feeling. You don't ever think you're going to be the one to be cheered for in a setting like that. Before we even played our first match, it felt like we were going to be unstoppable. The place is going insane. First map starts, and there's this moment where OG has his Earth Shatter, and he just turns around, hits this like five man Earth Shatter. Literally, it was like 5,000 people just go insane. I'll never forget how loud that crowd was. I've been to esports events all over the world, but that crowd was so hyped up and so loud, it literally announced to the world that this is going to work. I can keep, you know, feel the walls, you know, and like everything kind of starts shaking. And not only do you, you know, feel it and hear it yourself, it's coming through the player mic. The panel sound, the headset, the headphones, the padak, padak, you know, the game was a little bit hard to hear. I felt it. And when that big play happened, I remember just, you know, how it felt, how proud I was. Like, you know what, we're going to win this series. My whole body was covered in goosebumps because it was just like, I, I mean, I, it will, I, I'll never forget it. I'll just never forget it. It was just bananas. It was so surreal. And we played the Houston Outlaws the next match in the big rivalry moment, right? And again, the place was just electric. Like the whole, whole venue was going crazy. We got that first, you know, team fight win, first kill. Like it was instant, like roar. And you could hear it from backstage. It was insane. Like, I mean, the team just loved it. We wanted to put our best foot forward for this. And we weren't afraid to kind of dig in. We wanted to make sure that, you know, going into this, not only do we crush Valiant, but we also beat Houston. There's no greater feeling than showing up to your fans and winning in the way we did. The fact that we came in there annihilated our opponents and, and seeing everybody on stage afterwards, like, I mean, you can't really describe that in emotions. Like, it, it meant a lot.
it was like so overwhelming for all of us, but OG, you know, who had like left his family back in Korea to come play for our organization, to leave everything behind and, and make this commitment. And then to see like thousands of people chanting your name, it's one of those things that you just can't, you can't describe. It's one of those moments that you can never expect to happen. The fans just stayed, you know, it was, it was just so incredible because nobody wanted to leave until they just gave extra love. It was just the coolest thing. It was just this, this really cool bonding moment between staff and players and, and you know, being able to, to see it all unfold and, and just the amount of support that you had from the crowd was just insane. Being on stage in that moment with the whole crowd still being there, you know, celebrating, things like that are the reason I'm in esports, right? That will always, you know, be a special moment in my career. And um, yeah, I mean, can't, can't ask for a better first home set. It was just uh, a great moment coming out of that homestand. It all kind of came together at the right moment and created just this piece of esports history that will never be forgotten. This was kind of a historic moment for Overwatch. This wasn't just a win, this was the first home win. And, you know, we were the team that got to do that and be able to give that to them. Uh, you know, give those wins to the fan and, and, and be able to have that experience all together as a Fuel family. And I'll never forget it. You know, we're on top of the world. We just had this awesome event in Dallas. And it's like, it felt like we were back on track. So our team has literally gone from being like the third worst team in the league to now being at the top of the table. And so all of us were excited. We were back on track, we're there. And then it happened. We went from the very top again to the very bottom. Things didn't really go as expected. I think there was a lot of changes in the meta, uh, a lot of things that you know we didn't quite adjust well to. Our structure didn't really hold as well as we thought it would. Unfortunately, it just kind of didn't go our way the rest of the season. We had some really rough patches in the rest of the stage. And I mean, at the end of the day, we just couldn't keep up, it seemed like. You do everything right again. You get to the very top again. You get all these amazing emotions and happiness only to be like sent to the very bottom again. And not only was it like where we were before, it was deeper. It is really like just being on a roller coaster and having no control of it stopping. It just keeps happening. It was like the biggest letdown to rise up and then fall again. I can't tell you guys how much it hurt. It was, it was brutal. And it wasn't about me, it wasn't about the organization. I was really just hurt, hurting for the players because they were working so hard and putting everything they had into this and they had that huge high. And then stage three and four happened. To go out and like let down the whole community of people that were supporting us again, uh, it hurt. You know, we had to just kind of roll with the punches and, and continue on and uh, kind of, you know, focus on what was next come season three. Season three was, you know, our next big building point, you know. This is where we got a little more drastic with our off-season changes. We always want to see what we can do to improve our team, be it with coaches, be it with players, you know, whatever. So we added a few new phrases to the team and, you know, looked really good coming into the season. You know, we had uh, Gamsu coming in, we had Doha, we had a new coach in Young coming in. We kind of trimmed down our coaching structure a little bit and we really wanted to have, you know, this new kind of style. Now we can make season three an even more successful year. It was going to be an interesting year because season three meant the end of every team being in LA. We were meant to be traveling for tens of thousands of miles to all these different uh, homestands, some in China, some in Korea, a bunch in the US, Europe, like everywhere, you know, you can imagine. It was really hype and exciting. Like after feeling that new homestand experience in season two, like it was super exciting to see what was next for the league. We're going to have all these home games again, right? Like we're going to be able to be with our crowd and supporters and like keep building on this platform that we have in the Overwatch League. And in addition to all those positive things, like this was the first time we actually had our team training here in our own facility in Dallas. We have all these opportunities to run our home games again. We were gonna hold like at least four or five esports events in Dallas with, with the fuel that, that year. And then uh, this pandemic hits. 
with breaking news, a presumptive positive case of COVID-19 in Dallas. Presumptive, of course. So unfortunately, uh, for everyone in the world, uh, you know, COVID you know, happened. And obviously that was a really painful time for everyone. No one expected that. Obviously we were weeks away from traveling, starting up our real road trip to China and everywhere around the world. And then that happened. And all of these plans we had went straight down the drain. And we had to figure out how to put these players in their own apartments and get them the ability to compete still. And the league had to figure out all this stuff. Players were worried about their families back at home. We had players from all these different places. And I can't tell you all out there how like difficult it was to get the Overwatch League just to have a season. It was just mind boggling. We all did the best we could with that season. It was rough and, you know, uh, playing from home and playing kind of isolated, not even able to play in our office space that we'd built out the whole season for. And I still remember, you know, the first week when, when Dallas got locked down and we had a match to play in two days and we couldn't even enter our offices. You know, for us to try to have to change absolutely everything uh, in an instant was very hard. There were a lot of times where the team just couldn't see each other and. To, to introduce those kind of variables while we're mid-rebuild uh, was a very, very tough thing for us to do. Just to be able to put on the season that we had in season three was uh, honestly like a, an incredible feat. Everybody at the Overwatch League, all the people who helped during that time deserve a ton of credit because um, against all odds, we were able to still put on an Overwatch League season in season three. Season three was just difficult. Competitively, it was just mediocre. We had like a decent season. We we made a couple stage playoffs. We like got knocked out, I think in the quarterfinals of both of those. Uh, we failed to make the playoffs again. It was a season where we had another opportunity to prove again that we had been the best organization in Overwatch Esports and we let it slip away. It was kind of the year we knew we needed like major change. Like we had to, we had to make some major change. Cause I'm just not happy like going out with the team and not getting results. Like still loved our players, still loved everyone that we've had in the organization up to that point. It's just like kind of unacceptable for me to be the guy that effectively is at the top and be responsible for the results that we're having. And I don't blame anybody but myself. You know, even a lot of things that are out of my control happen during the course of these seasons. I'd never put the blame on anyone else other than myself. And. I knew that I had to do things drastic to, to change that trajectory that we had been on. You know, in talking with Stro towards the end of the season, you know, we kind of felt like a change could happen sooner or later and the decision was made to move on. You know, in, in that kind of moment, it's something that you expect as a coach, you know, it's like, this is what you sign up for. So, you know, despite not wanting it to happen, you know, it, it's, you know, something you have to deal with. We were trying to always improve, and I think he was too, but you know, at the end of the day, you always gotta move on, move forward, and continue trying to improve. I know it didn't work out for him and us, like we, we overall had a pretty poor season, but you know, I want all the fans to realize as well that that guy put his blood, sweat, and tears into that. Arrow specifically, when he came in, you know, brought us great success, right? Right off the rip. You know, I could tell his passion was there. I could tell him every day he would show up to work. And I could tell he really, really did care. In reflecting on that time, you know, I still feel very happy of all the experiences that I got to share with the team, with you guys, with the fans. And there's so many memories. I wish I, I, wish I could touch on them all or, or even tell you guys them all. It was a really fun time, really positive time in our lives. And we got to do something that a lot of people won't ever get to do. You know, I think overall my time with Fuel, very happy it happened. And, uh, you know, I've made a lot of memories that are going to stay with me forever.